Hi, I'm Peter Donauer with Community Solutions Initiative, and I'm going to show you how to build a 800 milliamp charge controller today. The 800 milliamp charge controller is very similar to the 170 milliamp charge controller that we built in another video. The only main difference is that it uses a heat sink and a different resistor. The 800 milliamp resistor is 1.5 ohms, while the 170 milliamp resistor is 6.8 ohms. We've chosen the 800 milliamp uh, charge controller, but there's uh, in the written instructions there's uh, specifications to build a 600 milliamp charge controller or a 1000 milliamp charge controller as desired. Our charge controller is comprised of a set of alligator clips, some pliable 18x2 speaker wire that comes in red and black, a black plastic protective covering, a female AML connector and associated pins. We use a solid copper wire as jumpers to solder the connections together our 1.5 ohm resistor, heat sink, screw and nut to attach to the voltage regulator, the LM1117, and we'll be using quite a bit of the JB weld. First thing we're going to do is build the heat sink and voltage regulator assembly. Uh, what we want to do is take a heat sink and with some fine grained sandpaper sand off the edge of the black plating which resists uh, glue. We're going to be gluing it to the resistor later and we need a surface which it can attach to. Now we'll take our voltage regulator and put a little dab of our silicone based heat sink compound on the back side, the metal side. We're going to put that in the channel of the heat sink. and line up the holes. On the back side I'll take my quarter inch brass screw, feed it through. On the front side the brass acorn nut. And then with the screwdriver I'll tighten it on. Now we're going to glue the AML connector to the resistor. You can see here this is one that's been glued together. And optionally, you can use a rubber band to hold it together while it's drying. I'll just take my resistor and my connector, and I want to put the, the non-channel side, that's the writing side of the resistor, on the back end of the AML terminal uh, connector. And that's the other side that, that has the ridge, so you want to use the flat side. I'll just take a little bit of my JV weld. Smear it on the connector. I'll place the resistor right on top of that. Press it down firmly and let it dry for four or six minutes. So I'm going to cut off about a 14 inch length of the 18-2 speaker wire. I'll split it. With the black wire on one end, I want to strip off enough to attach a pin. It's going to be a male pin. I'm just bending the wire over itself so that the pin flaps have more to grab onto. Just crimp that on. Now 
on the on the red wire, all we need to do is strip off about a half of an inch. With the resistor attached to the connector, we can now attach the voltage regulator and heatsink to the resistor. And what we're going to be doing is actually putting glue in between the legs and the side of the heat sink on the very end of the resistor, like so. But what I want to do is bend the terminals of the voltage regulator a little bit out first, and then I'll take a bit of the JB weld, put it on the end of the heat sink, and I'll put a little bit more on the resistor, on the lip there. In this case it's better to use too much than too little. And then I can put it in place. And you should see the JB weld ooze up through the terminals. Now you can use a rubber band to hold it in place or just hold it with your fingers. It'll take about four minutes to dry. Now using our 18 to 22 gauge uh, solid wire, we're going to cut off about an inch, twice, for two jumper cables. And if you cut off a little bit more, that's probably better than less. We'll strip that the insulation off entirely. Now with the jumper cables we're going to put some 90's in it and in the middle we want about three quarters of an inch of just straight uh, wire. Put one 90 there and then on, on the other end we want just a very small 90 maybe a, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch like so. That's the form you're looking for. We'll do that with both of them. Now I'll take a 18 gauge stranded wire and cut off about two to two and a half inches. And on one side we're going to want to crimp on our male pin. So I'll strip about an eighth of an inch of wire and on the other side I want to strip about a half inch of wire. This cable is going to go from the AML terminal or to the uh, one of the voltage regulator terminals. Now we're going to solder the terminals together and we'll take a quick look at the voltage regulator terminals. In this orientation, the one on the right hand side should be slightly up off the res resistor body, like so. So just bend that slightly up off the body. Now we'll take one of our little jumper cables. We want to place that in the right hand side channel of the resistor terminal. And I'll just hold it in place while I bend the resistor terminal up over it. So it should stay in place and that will give me time to solder it together.
Now we're going to take the jumper cable that's attached to the right hand side of the resistor terminal and place it on the center terminal of the voltage regulator. And we'll solder that together. We'll come back and clip off the excess uh, of the jumper cable. Now we're going to do the same thing with the second jumper cable attaching the left hand side resistor terminal to the left hand side voltage regulator terminal. Put it in place. Wrap the resistor terminal up over it. Solder it together. And I'll make sure the other two terminals are touching, which they are. And I'll solder those together. Lastly, we're going to take our 18 gauge uh, stranded jumper. And we'll push it into the right hand side terminal of the voltage regulator. Or push the terminal into it. And then we'll follow that up by soldering those together with plenty of solder. Now I'm taking the stripped end of the red wire. And I placed along the left hand side already soldered together terminals with the voltage regulator and the resistor and I'll solder that together. Now I'll take the end cutters and just clean up all the terminals. I cut off the excess part of the jumpers that we have. Sometimes the resistor terminals stick up, and if that's the case, you can clean those up as well. With all the solders made, I'll go back over the terminals, and I use my needle nose pliers to ensure that everything is separated. If those terminals are touching, then the charge controller won't work properly. In this case, all the terminals are separated, and I've made a small batch of JB Weld. I want to put a liberal amount over the terminals now to keep them separated and also support the connections. As this dries, the JB weld will sink in and they should be held in place. For the second soldering iron, we're going to burn a hole in the back of the black plastic cap for the wires to go through. Now we're going to assemble all the rest of the components. We're going to take our jumper cable and bend that in to the positive terminal. And with my other hand, you'll notice that I kept that on the uh, connection just to make sure that that's not being bent around too much. Take our negative wire, and with the pin, we'll put that into the negative terminal of the connector. And then with our electrical tape, we'll cut off about 20 inches of this. We're going to wrap that around all the terminals to build up that part of the charge controller.
take our black plastic cap and slip that over the back of the wires. And bring that up to the top. Meanwhile, we'll strip the black and red wires to put the alligator clips on them. Should each be about a half of an inch. We'll slip the insulation over the wire first. and crimp those alligator clips on. Slipping the insulation back over the crimp. Now we can put a zip tie around the black protective covering to hold that in place. I kind of want to align it over the voltage regulator legs, like so. Clip off the excess. I'll take my terminal extraction tool, pin extraction tool, and I'll just make sure those terminals are in the center. And then I'll add the size of the charge controller, the permanent pen on the outside. I suppose there is one more step put a another zip tie on the wires just to hold them in place. There we go, now we're ready to do some charging with our 800 milliamp charge controller.